Right. Like, how, how is role playing going to affect these things? Yeah. Um, role playing games affect the storytelling. Well, um, I, 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 there's so much going on in that space. Critical Role and all these other shows that are now becoming popular. And I realize there's like a massive fan base for this kind of thing. It's not something I follow. So I don't know exactly what's going on. However, when Gary Gygax and all these guys were making Dungeons and Dragons back in the day, they were trying to make an interactive version of Lord of the Rings. And in fact, they bumped up against the Tolkien estate a number of times because they were coming into sort of trademark and licensing problems. That's why they are halflings in Dungeons and Dragons and not hobbits. When clearly they're hobbits, you know, but then we have to say halflings so Gary Gygax doesn't get sued by Tolkien's estate. Um, and so usually what happens, what I think what's going to be interesting about that is that people get comfortable with a cosmology. So the thing about fantasy is that Tolkien basically single-handedly created the modern high fantasy genre. And everyone now has to deal with the shadow of Tolkien. I mean, even George R.R. Martin says we're all walking in the footsteps of Bilbo Baggins, which is why the main character in Game of Thrones is a short guy who drinks. <laughs> right? He's a drunk hobbit, basically, is what's going on. And so, and, and, and you can take, like, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and just line them up in the spreadsheet and see all the parallels in the character and story and everything else. So, um, when you're playing table uh, role-playing games, it tends to be fantasy. And so people are participating in this communal mythology. It's almost like a collective unconscious of fantasy that everyone is playing in. And so what may then happen is that people might explore different aspects of this and that might morph into original creations. So someone doing a, uh, a fan fiction of Twilight turns into Fifty Shades of Grey, right? So that, so that you, you may have people who then explore the boundaries of the map and sort of want to see what go beyond their edges. So we may get some new innovations like that. Um, I don't know if there's as much tape, uh, role-playing games in other cosmologies like sci-fi. I mean, I know those games exist. I used to have GURPS, the generic universal role-playing system where you could play cyberpunk and you could do Blade Runner if you wanted. I don't know if those genres of role-playing are as popular, um, and so, but there could be stuff there. So it's a way for people to explore narrative and storytelling in sort of an improv fashion. And then maybe out of that improv will be the seed of some new creation that somebody wants to go off and sort of craft into something that's not quite as improvisational, but is more manicured, right? Is, is more garden in that sense. 